Really should have just told everybody to go outside and grab that ice cream man. I was, I really, you know, me, I probably made the right decision, but there was that moment where I went, should we really, really, why not? So next time you hear that, that ding, 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 we're out of here. Yeah. Um, I'm going to read to you the foundational verse. Luke 16, 10. All right, if you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. Um, so how am I going to connect this message with OCD? Um, <laughs> can you take this down just a little bit? Um, I'm not OCD, I just want to take care of the little things now, is the title. It's because I really pay attention to these little things. I, I just, my eye is like, doo -doo -doo, you know, and I think the, um, I think the people at the church, the leaders and the, they're starting to notice that because we clean really hard afterwards and we're cleaning and there's like mops and brooms going around and people are putting things away and you know they're about to turn off the lights and I look and, and I see a little piece of paper or a leaf or something and I got to run over there and I got to go get it. Um, I just pay attention to little things. Little things really, they bother me. Um, <laughs> they bother me slightly. And my wife's going, slightly? <laughs> Um, but yeah, I would probably say I'm a little obsessive compulsive. I always have been. Um, like I said, the team's noticing that about me now. But um, I'll tell you a story about this rug that we used to have. I think I might have said it once before. But uh, we had this rug, and it was one of those big rugs. That, it's like big oriental rugs. And, and you, you put them in the floor in the front room, and they have these little tassels. You know what I'm talking about, right? They have these little tassels on the end. I could not go to sleep until I went to this rug and I straightened out every tassel. It had to be clean and brushed and pointing all in the same direction. I didn't like it when they were all like this, you know, I didn't like that. And uh, I know it is a little bit of a problem, although I'm not as bad as I used, it's, it is way better, yeah. But, like, when I make a sandwich, you know, if my wife made a sandwich or something, you know, she takes everything out, throws it over the counter, and makes a sandwich, and everything's on the counter. I can't do that. I gotta grab the loaf of bread, right? Take out the two pieces of bread, clip the little twisty tie, put the bread back, go to the lunch tray thingy, grab out the ham or whatever, put it on the bread, and put that, put that back, then get out the tomato and the lettuce, and I just, I'll do it that way. Anybody? Yeah. Thank you, Alicia. That's awesome. Yeah, so I'm not the only one. So, but it's just something that I, I guess maybe I was born with it because I, I think there's some really good things about that because I don't miss a lot and I pay attention to detail and um, usually I'll get things done the first time usually. Um, usually. But, um, but a couple of weeks ago, thinking about these little things that I take care of and maybe some things that I don't pay attention to, but my wife, for whatever reason, out of the blue, showed me her phone. You go to the first picture. My wife showed me her phone and says, what do you see? And I went, that one right there. Third one down, second one over, that one. The little black spot is not in the center. And I was going, I could spot it. I, she goes, it was like, here, give me your phone. I was like, it was like this. She goes, I got this OCD test on my phone. Can you pick what's wrong? And she goes, I go, that one. <laughs> I, just, I just, my eye went right to it. So did anybody spot it right away? I know I said it really fast. Oh, I guess my, my people. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. I got another one for you. Go to the next one. What's wrong? The brick in the middle. You guys are fast. So you go, what? Huh? What? If you look dead spot in the middle, all these bricks are laid left to right. There's a brick in the middle that's going up and down. Right? There's a couple of them, right? Yes, yeah, so that bothered me. <laughs> but it, it bothered me. I don't, I don't know if you guys are like my people here, so. <laughs> Does it bother you in the sense where like you just, oh. You get really like, I, I can't, it's, not, it's out of place, it bothers me. I mean, there's certain things that just, I look at and I go, I, I can't handle this. I, I've got to do it the right way, I've, I've got to fix it. I can't, you know, go to sleep, we'll be ready to go to sleep and we put pajamas on and we get in the bed and we shut the doors, lock the doors and we sit there and, and Debbie will say something like, you know, 
I should have put that water bottle away, or I should have brought the water bottle in, and whatever. And she'll good night, and you know, and I go, I have to go in the front room and get her water bottle because I can't go to sleep. It's on my mind. All right, next picture. This is this is not my closet. They're not properly spaced a half inch in between the hangers. Come on. You guys know what's wrong with it right away, right? What is it? There's an empty hanger. I can't do that. Yeah, and so, and if you look at, if you look, the hangers don't even match. There's like, that hanger's, it's really white and it's too small. And the same thing with this one. I just went to Target a couple days ago and I bought brand new hangers because they didn't match. <laughs> and I redid my closet the other day. I've got my long sleeve shirts. I got, you know, the dark ones all the way to the light ones. And then um, there's my short sleeve shirts. And, you know, there's, then there's my pants. Because I, I, can't, I cannot handle it. So uh, I think I have one more picture for you. What's wrong? Hurry. If you can pick it up in a split second. Uh oh. <laughs> If you even just looked at it and went, let me see. Oh yeah, it's off. But if you looked at it and went, oh, sh I, I can't handle that. So I, I have a nightmare for you. I just found this picture, I think, a couple nights ago. Go ahead, next one. What do you do? <laughs> what do you do? This has happened to me. Do I make? Do I make the dollars go to 40 and then mess up the gallon measurement? <laughs> or do I keep the gallons at 10 000, 000 and mess up the money amount? Oh. You can't win. You have to make the dollars and then just go like this. Oh, yeah, I... Your daughter. <laughs> I'm like, I fill up my gas tank and I'm going, okay, you know, 39, 87, 39, 88, 38, 99, 39, and I'll stop at 39, 39. Okay, one more. What, 39, 99. I'm like, okay, a little bit. Oh, I went over. Dang. So I got to go to the next dollar amount. <laughs> and then if, there's, if my gas tank isn't big enough, I'll, I'll just kind of go, oh, oh. And I won't even look at it. I won't even print the receipt. I can't handle that. Was that the last one? That was the last one. Go back to that one more time. Uh, one more. Yeah, what would Jesus do? <laughs> would he stay on it? Does that, does that not bug people? The people that this doesn't bother, raise your hand. Tila is like, whatever. It bothers her. It doesn't bother you? Whatever. Oh. It'd be cool, but right. Yeah, you get it. Thank you. <laughs> so, my eyes go right to it, because I, for whatever reason, and here's, here's the highlight for you guys. Here's where we're going to make a turn here. I can see these things in these situations, these little things like that. I, I can just see it. But the question is, if you look at the Bible verse, how obsessive and compulsive are you in applying God's word that fast to the little things in your life. How fast do you look at these little situations that you come across and you can instantly spot what God would be pleased with and what God wouldn't be pleased with? Have we got enough word inside of us that we can actually look at these little situations and be trusted that we would do the right thing? I'm going to read Matthew 25, 21 to you. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling the small amount, the little things. So now I will give you many more responsibilities. And let's celebrate together. See, in the spiritual part of my life, I just don't want to have these little things get out of control. I want to make sure these little things are handled right away, just as quick, just as fast as I put my closet in order. I want to put the little things in my life in order. Because I don't want them to blow up into big things. Okay? See, I've learned from my past that in the past I wasn't taking care of these little small things that God had put in front of me. These little tests that I failed. Because I didn't have God's word in me enough that when I saw something, I recognized and said, this is going to please God and this is not. 
I wasn't as compulsive and obsessive with applying God's word to my life as I should have been. In every part of our life, God wants us to make godly decisions, not with just the obvious. Okay, like we're not going to lie, we don't want to steal, we don't want to murder, we don't want to commit adultery. That's, that's the easy things, hmm, in a way. But those you can recognize, you can go, oh, that's right, black and white, right and wrong. But there's these little tiny things that get put in front of us that sometimes we don't really know until we put them up against the Word of God. And then we can recognize them as something that we need to take care of. We have to learn to look at even the smallest things of life and interpret them from God's viewpoint. See, if we take care of the little things in a godly way, we will avoid a lot of major issues that we go through in life. Because we didn't make the little right decision. And it blew up. See, God will always complete the things that He has started if that we're faithful to Him and faithful to His Word. And we take care of the little things so He can bless those things and those right decisions that we've made into big blessings. If these little decisions that come across our life, we don't make the godly decision, God can't bless it, God can't grow it. And it never becomes what it should have become. It's like a little flower, a little seed. You put seed in the ground if you don't water it and put the... You know, put the uh, Oh, what's this stuff? Fertilizer. The fertilizer, thank you. And, and if you don't water it on time, you don't take care of that little seed, it can't grow. See, sometimes people wonder why they're, such a, they're in such a big mess in life. It starts with what were they doing when that mess was little? When you're in a really big mess, you have to kind of go back and think about what could I have done when this thing first started? What decisions could I have made that would have been a more godly decision? I, um, I remember when my girls were young, 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 like five, six, seven. You know that age where they're kind of learned what it is, what a lie is? You know, when they just started getting to the point where they're afraid to tell the truth sometimes. For whatever reason, they get afraid that they're going to get in trouble. You tell my girls, no, no, no. If you tell a lie in the beginning, you're going to get in trouble. If you tell the truth in the beginning, even though it's kind of hard, you'll be okay. Because then truth helps us to deal with things. So like if I would, you know, ask Allison or Mary, you know, hey, it's time to get to bed. You know, did you guys brush your teeth? And I'd get that look like, um, yeah. Yeah, I brushed my teeth. Yep, brushed my Yep, I did. The toothpaste is on the toothbrush. And I was brushing. But you knew that they weren't telling the truth. I used to tell them whenever I caught them in a little lie, it was like, it was like you were letting the enemy put glue on your heart every time you told this little lie. Just this little drop of glue. And if you kept lying and you kept lying, it became easier. There was just more glue that was building up on your heart. Pretty soon, the truth had no way of getting out because you've covered it with so much lies that your heart didn't know what was truth and what was and after a while you just didn't care. Remember those days? Yeah. yeah. So, Dad, you still tell us that. Okay. <laughs> but, um, um, it's, just, it's just that in Ephesians 4.29, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read something else to you. See, it's not just in this line. It's also in our words. It's also in what we say. These little things that we let come out of our mouth. These little tiny words that don't have to be a lie. But Ephesians 4.29 says, Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those that hear them. See, how many times do we let these little things come out of our mouth that after a while they blow up? Like how many times have you walked by somebody and went, well, if you would have done right the first time. You know, if you just, you know, I can't believe she did that. Just, you know, you start whispering these things. And you throw out these little barbs that come out of your mouth about a situation or someone that after a while, you keep saying these little barbs where you, you, know, you just start putting people down with your words. Uh, the guy's always been such a jerk. You know, and you just, pretty soon, you're not so afraid to whisper them anymore that pretty soon they come out as bold yells, shouts. Because the more you just say these things, you get a lot more bolder. We're just blurting stuff out. You know what? You're just a jerk. I just don't like the way you're doing things. If you would have done that right, you start saying these disrespectful things because they started with little whispers. If you can whisper an ungodly thing right now, it won't be long before you're bold enough to shout them out. There's another thing. The second thing that we can deal with, that if you look in Luke, there was a point where there was a... Um, there was a message about money and what we do with our money and God was using it, Jesus was using it as an example of how we don't take care of little things. 
Uh, we read in Luke 16, 10, if you are faithful in little things, you'll be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with the great responsibilities. And I'll keep reading through uh, verse 11. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? And if you are not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with your own things? This is part of the message I'm talking about today, but the main message is, is just all the little things that we don't take care of. But let's talk about money for a second. See, because Luke 16, 13, if you just keep reading, it says, no servant, can, no servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will hold the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in mammon or money. If your first priority is material things, then how, God, how is God going to bless you with the spiritual things? And that's a lesson that I really learned about money. If I wasn't taking care of the little needs that I had, and I was taking care of the wants and the desires first, I, I was flip-flopped. I couldn't take care of these little things that I had. And I, I couldn't take care of my family and, and my extended family and my friends and bless others if I wasn't taking care of how I handled money in small ways. And the first way it started was getting to know that it wasn't even my money to begin with. It was God's. I had to make sure that I was giving to his house first, had to make sure that I was using it in a wise way so that God would in turn bless me. And so it's not just money, it's my words. If, if my words are a blessing to people in a small way, they could be a blessing to people in a great way. And the third one is our daily actions. Once again, in Matthew 25, 21, I'm going to read this one. I'm going to keep reading through the verse. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling the small things, the little things. So now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. See, paying attention to those little things can possibly be overboard, maybe in some people's ways, the way I do things with the hangers and the, making sure the money comes out even on the gas pump. Maybe that stuff can be overboard. But I will tell you, those obsessive tendencies, those compulsive things to want to get things right in God's way, you can't be overboard enough. You have to look at God's word and just say, God, how can I apply your word today in the largest of things and in the smallest of things? You can't over apply God's word to your life. See, because God cares about the little things that we do to show our faithfulness to his word. And it's the littlest action sometimes that can do the most damage. Anybody know what I'm talking about? See, and I'm going to apply it right back with a big mirror on the Christian world. How many times do you hear in the Christian world about a leader or somebody falling or suddenly shocking everybody with these ungodly actions they got caught in? Whether it was some type of a sexual immoral situation or maybe there was some uh, money issues where there was um, some theft in a church or was caught... You know, pick a sin, whatever. You know, we're all, we're all there in a lot of ways. But you've got to ask yourself, when a Christian leader falls, what happens? What happens when somebody who should know better? A lot of leaders, they try to be great at big things that show their faithfulness instead of the little things in their ministry. See... If you can't lead and treat just one person with respect, how are you going to lead many people and treat them with respect? If you can't be faithful in your relationship to God, how are you going to be faithful in the relationship with your job, with the people you work with, to your wife, to your husband? See, if you can't show your faithfulness in the littlest things, it's going to be really hard to show your faithfulness in the big things. That's just the way it's going to work. I remember hearing a story about a football player once that, uh, it's a true story, I heard it from a pastor, so I guess I'll believe him. Um, he talked about this uh, football player that came to his church, and after college he got drafted by the NFL. And uh, the, he was always a tither in church, and he was very faithful, and he understood the way money worked that we show God our faithfulness faithfulness to him and everything 
And he would always write that first you know, portion of his income to God to show his faithfulness that it belonged to God. But the time he walked up to his pastor says, I gotta tell you something, I, I'm signing this big contract next week, like a million something dollar contract. And he goes, I'm just letting you know now because as soon as I sign this contract, I, 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 I've, I've got to write a check. You know, my hands are shaking. I've got to write a check. <laughs> and he said he literally that day had signed the check a little bit later in the day. And it was for millions of dollars. So he really had to sign a, a tithe check over to his church for like, it's like $1.5 million. He said he literally wrote this check out and then just, he said, I ran. The pastor's house was like about a mile or two away. He didn't take his car. He said he ran. He was so nervous. And he knocked on the pastor's door and he hears, just take it, take it, take it, just take it. But it showed his faithfulness. And I'm not saying it's easy to make a godly decision. It, it's hard. It's easier to make the ungodly decisions. We all know that. But it showed his faithfulness to God that he's been writing these checks for these amounts all his life and then we had an opportunity, there was no question, he knew we had to write it. That was awesome. So finally, so what big things can you do with your little decisions that will prevent you from getting into big messes? I'm going to highlight a couple of things for you. If you have your Bible, if you have your notes, I'd, I'd write this stuff down. See, a way to be faithful in the little things is so that God would trust us with these big things later in life is that, here's your highlight, we need to be aware and know what God thinks of our decisions. What does God think? What godly aspect can we apply to our life that's going to help us? To remember that godly decisions are made when we allow God's word to lead our thoughts and our actions. Philippians 4.8 Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, some translations say good reputation or good report. If there is any excellence and anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. So now you have to ask yourself, in these decisions that I make, whether they're little or big, what I'm about to do what I'm going to do right now, is it true, honorable, right, pure? Is it lovely? Is it of a good repute or give you a good reputation? Is what you're about to do, no matter how little or big, is it an excellent work? And most of all, is it worthy of praise? Not for ourselves, but is it worthy of praise to God? And those are the things that you have to look at in your decisions. Look at Philippians 4.8. Is it true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, of a good repute, or give you a good reputation? Is it an excellent work, and is it worthy of praise? If you put that up against your decisions, you can't go wrong. And if you do mess up, God has an amazing amount of grace. You just start over again and do it right the next time. And remember one other thing. Who holds all these little things together? We're built up of so much DNA and cells. The littlest things comprise who you are. The littlest things. And you have to remember who holds all that together. Colossians 1.17 He, Jesus, is before all things. And in Him all things, creation, hold together. Before there was an earth, universe, or nature, there was Jesus. I'm going to share something uh, to you real quick, um, for you real quick. The other night I was looking at uh, the news on the internet. I don't really look at news on TV. It irritates me. It's more like entertainment right now than news. And so I tend to get my news off the internet. And I can browse through and kind of feel what God wants me to look at. I saw this article that says, there was this bracelet that was found in a cave that was put in this really nice order Therefore, the conclusion was that the Neanderthals, the Neanderthals had a, a more mind ability than we thought. They could make these great decisions to put things in order. And I go, how do you find a necklace and determine that it was Cro-Magnon or Neanderthal evolutionary human beings? It didn't make sense to me. It didn't make sense to me. 
So I read the article, and I, then I looked at the comments. And the comments, all these guys were typing in. And a lot of people were, ty were typing in that the article said that the Earth was about 140 billion years old. And some people that had faith were typing in, what are you talking about? God says it's maybe six to 8,000. If you look at the Bible and you calculate, and like some people have done. And then some people have said, oh, you creationists. And there was this big debate between creation people and evolution people. And I thought, I love debates. <laughs> so I got a login and I started typing in. But all of these comments are really snide and witty and like, you know, oh, you, you, know, you people that don't believe in God, what's wrong with you? Can't you see it's obvious? And it was like, they're all, so I started out by saying, look, I don't want to be sarcastic and I don't want to write down these, you know, wit criticisms. I just, I just want to have good discussion. So then I typed in, I said, listen. Here was my point. When you get into an evolution creation debate, the first thing I tend to say is you can dig down into layers and find all thousands, perhaps millions of fossils from billions of years ago. Dinosaurs, complete skeletons, complete. And then you can dig to a couple of layers and you'd find thousands, millions, millions of fossils and bones from modern man and what we look like, right? And they keep saying that we've moved from these original forms that dinosaurs became ostriches and birds and alligators but what's in between nothing you can't find what's called a transitional form you can't say oh here's where t-rex was a t-rex and oh look now he got feathers and oh look now he got smaller and now he stretched out yeah he, now he's laying big ostrich eggs and boom now he's an ostrich you don't find thousands and millions of transitional forms which you should find and that's always my biggest argument so I started typing some stuff in, but it was always, it was very nice, it was very, I wanted to do, and I know, how does this connect with my message, OCD, is because <laughs> I wanted these people to see the little things. I wanted them to say, no, wait a minute, how, how can you get from a, a ape to a modern man without the little things would be transitions and how can you, and there was some guys who were re very respectful and one guy says, his name was, Baron Aaron. Baron Aaron. He typed his code name. And he said, well, hey, listen, Alfredo. He says, I believe in the Almighty God and the teachings of Jesus and Neanderthal man. It was possible to have all three. And I said, so I want to point out a little scripture to you. So I pointed out Genesis 1-6. We were created in the image of God. The image, and I told this guy, you have to look at the little things. If you're a believer in the Word and God, he basically says that we were created at that point from his image. No transitional forms. No, I'm, I'm going to start here, but eventually you'll get to my image. He says, I created you in our image. Talking about Jesus, the Trinity was obviously in the, in the Old Testament as well. But it says, I created you in my image image the image of God there's no transitional forms we don't it's not there I said you have to look at the little things and my OCD was kicking in and I was, I was going read it I go you can see it and the, the weird thing is we had all these numerous things coming back and forth these numerous uh, um, chats and all of a sudden he didn't respond to me he didn't respond he was quiet and I was praying and hoping that was a good thing see and I, I even told him and I, I was typing things out like the world, the earth, we're on a certain axis that if we just went one inch to the right, we'd freeze. If we just went one inch to the left, we'd burn. God is in the little things, the tiniest things. And I'm going to tell you, look at the decisions you have in front of you, and just one inch to the left, you could burn. One inch to the right, you could freeze. If you get the little things right, You'll be okay. And it's going to start with the Word of God. See, Jesus and His Word will be the force, the power that enables you to make those right decisions. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, You are immensely awesome. You are incredible and wonderful. I sure appreciate Your Word, God. I can look at just one little two-letter word in your word, Father, and it makes me think for hours. 
I thank you, God, that your word speaks to us daily. I thank you that we can keep it in our heart. So when we need it, it's always there to pull out, Lord, and just say, I'm going to apply the word of God to this situation, no matter how small, no matter how big. I thank you for these people here, Lord, that we have ears to listen and a heart to plant your word in, that we have minds and spirits that will help us take this knowledge and turn it into wisdom. So when we come across these situations, Lord, you know exactly what it is that we're supposed to do, how we're supposed to treat others, love others, and take care of ourselves, God. I thank you for that. I give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, and his people said, Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. You know, if that ice cream man came around, we were <laughs> going to all be dismissed. Did anybody hear an ice cream man? No. I think he probably went out and took care of that ahead of time. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's all stand, and we're going to be dismissed from our uh, assembly today. Lord, we thank you, first of all, for the message that you've delivered through Pastor Alfredo. And there were many things that you wanted us to hear today. And I think they were articulately delivered to us. We thank you for that. Help us to take that challenge. Not necessarily to be OCD, but to be OCD about the little things that you would have us do and the little decisions that in time become big decisions. Help us to understand how important it is that we face each obstacle that comes before us and ask that question and be discerning about the direction that we take. Lord, we ask you to continue to bless us at Rock of Life Fellowship. We are here to serve you. We're here to understand and to, to gain more knowledge of you and what you would like to have us do with our lives. So, Lord, we ask you to continue your work in us. Help us to understand that we need to have you at the center of our lives. And if we do that, we will be making the right decisions and pleasing you and in the process receive the blessings that you have in store for all of us. And now as we leave Rock of Life Fellowship, may God richly bless each and every one of us by shining the light of his countenance upon us. May he grant us grace, mercy, and peace both now and forevermore. Thank you, Lord. We ask these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the body of believers all said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us. If you do have a need for prayer, Pastor Alfredo and I will be here along with other members of the body. Please come let us know what those requests are. Thank you.